We are now on chapter one, lesson 12, which is the last lesson of this um, chapter, which is a little exciting. And this is grouping symbols, where we are continuing to evaluate the numerical expression and write and interpret numerical expressions. This we're still gonna be, <clears throat> I'm sorry, my throat. <clears throat> this we're still gonna be using PEMDAS. So we still need to start with the P, E, M, D, A, S. And as a review, the P stands for the parentheses, the E stands for the exponent, M, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Keeping in mind that we're doing the multiplication division at the same time, left or right, whichever comes first, and the addition or subtraction at the same time, left and right, whatever comes first. First is parentheses, Exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So we have four steps in that order. The only difference between this and lesson 1 11, which was the one prior, is that you could see that these equations, or expressions I should say, are longer, and you'll see some different types of brackets. And so at the most, you'll see this one where there are three types of brackets. The first bracket we'll do are the ones that look like this the regular brackets that we've seen in the past, followed by the second one, which are the straight ones, followed by these fancier ones, which look a little like this. So we're gonna do these first, second, and third. So you can see here, five times the straight bracket, the curved bracket, 11 minus three bracket minus bracket 13 minus 9 bracket bracket. The first thing that they did was the first parentheses. So you can see that you have to do parentheses. And if you break down the parentheses, it's the curved one first. And so the first that they did was this right here. The first set of parentheses, 11 minus 3 is 8. They wrote everything else out. 5 times 11 minus 3 is 8 minus 13 minus 9, keeping all the brackets and everything still. Now in the second step, they did the second set of parentheses that still has the curved shape. Now, 13 minus 9 is 4, and so you can see they copied everything else. 5 times bracket 8 minus 4 bracket. Then they did the last set of parentheses, which are the brackets. 8 minus 4 is 4. And then they still kept the five times. Five times four is finally 20, and they got their final answer. So now it's our turn to try it. So starting from left to right, you're looking for parentheses. And if there's different types of parentheses, we're gonna look for the curved one first. So here, oop, I see parentheses. I see these bracket ones, but we're gonna start with the curved ones. So we're gonna do this first curved one that we see which is nine times two. So we're gonna keep everything else the same. The 30 is gonna continue. We're gonna have the subtraction. We're gonna have the straight bracket. And then we're gonna do solve this one. Nine times two. Nine times two is 18. And we're gonna keep everything else the same. There's a subtraction sign. There's a curve bracket with a three times four with a curve bracket and then the straight bracket. Now, we're still on parentheses because there are more parentheses. And so we're looking for the next parentheses. I see parentheses here, but I also see the curved one. Keep in mind, we're gonna do the curved one first. So before we worry about this parentheses, we're gonna do the curved. So we're gonna keep the 30. We're gonna keep the subtraction. We're gonna keep the bracket and the 18. And then we're going to subtract 3 times 4. 3 times 4 is 3, 6, 9, 12. Okay, so we kept all, everything the same, and all we did was a 3 times 4, which is 12, and everything else remained the same. Now we're still actually on the parentheses, believe it or not, and these are the parentheses brackets. So we finally finished all the curved one. We see the 9 times 2 and the 3 times 4. We finished the curves. Now we're on the bracket. So before we do the 30, we have to do 30 minus the bracket, 
18 minus 12 if you don't know you could use your fingers and then you eventually get 6. And last but not least, so we did the 18 times the 12 next. And last but not least we'll do 30 minus 6 which is 24. And if you can't do 24 in your head, do 30 minus 6 on the side. Make sure to regroup. 10 minus 6 is 4 to 24. So make sure to break it step by step. And it's just like yesterday's lesson. The only difference is we added extra parentheses where we have to do the curved first, then the straight bracket, and then that like fancier bracket. So try it out for three, four, five, six. Um, but I do want to work on either seven or eight because that's where we get that extra fancy bracket. And just by looking at it, I think I'll do number seven. So the first thing we have to do are our parentheses, then exponents, multiplication, divisions, addition, subtraction, that order. So we have to focus on the parentheses first. And if we see different types of parentheses, we're going to worry about the um, curved one first. So here we have eight times a ton of different parentheses. 7 plus 4, which is in some kind of parentheses, times 2, with some more parentheses, minus more parentheses, with 11 minus 7 times 4, with more parentheses. So the first curved one, which looks like this, is right here, the 7 plus the 4. And so we're going to keep everything the same except for the 7 plus 4, which we're actually going to solve. So the 8 stays the same. Multiplication stays the same. You have that fancy bracket, and then you have the straight bracket, and then we have 7 plus 4. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 7 plus 4 is 11, and everything else stays the same. You have a multiplication, you have 2, you have the straight bracket, subtracted by straight bracket. Um, curved bracket, 11 minus 7, curved, times 4, straight, fancy. So, you could see we kept everything the same, and this is where it's really important with detail and attending to precision, because you want to make sure you have the 8 multiplied by fancy bracket, uh, straight bracket, solve 7 plus 4, which is 11, times 2, straight bracket, minus Straight bracket, curved bracket, 11 minus 7, curved bracket, times 4, straight bracket, fancy bracket. Now the next step we have to do is if we still see more parentheses, so we're still on the parentheses, and then we're going to see if we have any more of these curved ones. So here we see a fancy and a straight. We see some straights. Oh, there's a curved one, which is 11 minus 7. So we're going to keep everything the same except solve 11 minus 7. So we have 8 times fancy bracket, regular bracket, 11 times 2, which we solved last time, minus a regular bracket, 11 minus 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We get 4 times 4 regular bracket, uh, straight bracket, and then fancy. Now, the next thing we do is see if we have any more parentheses, and I still see more parentheses. We're going to look if there's any more curved ones, and just by looking at it, I see fancy, I see straight, I see straight and fancy. There are no more curved ones. So now we're going to move on to the straight ones. The first straight one I see, there's a fancy one, is the 11 times the 2. So we're going to solve we're going to rewrite everything and then just solve 11 times 2. So we have 8 with the multiplication, the fancy bracket. 11 times 2 is 22 minus bracket, 4 times 4, bracket, bracket. The next one we're going to do is there's still more parentheses out there. We're going to look for if there's any more of these straight ones, and I see one at the 4 times 4. We're going to solve everything else. 8 times fancy 22 minus um, 4 times 4 is 4, 8, 12, 16. 
and we're getting a lot closer. Now from here, I still see one last bracket, one last parentheses, and that's the fancy parentheses. 22 minus 16 is 6. So our final one is, we're going to continue this here because I ran out of space, is 8 times 6. And parentheses is the last, uh, not parentheses, multiplication because there's no exponent and we're finally hitting to multiplication over parentheses. 6 times 8 or 8 times 6 is 48 and that's our final, final, final answer. So this is literally just PEMDAS. It's just one step at a time, slow it down. Make sure you're not skipping any steps. Make sure you're not uh, forgetting any brackets. Make sure you're not forgetting any numbers or else your whole answer will be off after all that work. Number nine and 10, you're using the information right here about Joan, Joanne, Joan, and the cafe. So write an expression to represent the total number of muffins and bagels Joan, Joan sells in five days. So what's the total number of muffins and bagels Joan sells in five days? Well, here's our little breakdown over here. Write an expression means all they want is the, uh, almost like the equation. So like these, these are expressions. You just want the numbers out. Now in number 10, you're going to evaluate the expression, which means you're going to solve it to find the total number of muffins and bagels Joanne sells in five days. So number nine and number 10 connect. They're going to look at this section right here. And number nine, you're asked to write the expression and number 10, you're asked to actually solve it. I wanna see how you do on your own. Um, Joan has a cafe each day, so every single day, she bakes 24 muffins. So let's say Monday, she breaks 24, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, each day she's baking 24, 24, 24, 24, 24 muffins. She gives away three and sells the rest. So to whomever, whether it's a relative, whether it's the coworkers, she gives three away, and then she sells the rest. So let's say she baked on Monday. She got 24 muffins, and she gave three, sold the rest. If it was two days, she baked 24 muffins and another set of 24 muffins, and then she gives away three and sells the rest. I don't know if that's she gives away three each day or if she gives away three in general. That's a little tricky. Um, and so forth. Each day, she also bakes 36 bagels. She gives four away and sells the rest. So I want to see what you do interpreting that and doing that one. And um, we'll solve it during school time if you didn't get it. What I got excited about was I was actually looking at the spiral review. Now, one and two look just like the ones we did over here. So I'm not too worried about it because all you're doing is finding the value of each of the expressions. So you're just solving it. But here's where I'm looking at it thinking, man, we've done all these spiral reviews. What is one tenth of 200? This is like, I don't know, less than one or two or something. That was one of the first things we did. The Park family is staying at a hotel near an amusement park for three nights. The hotel costs $129 per night. How much were there three nights day in the hotel cost. We've done these ones. Um, you could definitely draw a picture box for this and then figure out one night, two night, three nights. So there'll be three boxes and then there's a certain amount each night. Um, this is getting exciting. I think we've come to the point where we've done the spiral review. On our first three or four days of school, every time I saw the spiral review, I was like, ooh, Miss Tolentino didn't teach it yet. Um, you may or may not have remembered it from fourth grade. I don't know, but now I'm looking at these What's the value of the underlying digit? Um, and then this one is random expression. You can do all these. Use your resource book, use your notes, um, look through the previous homeworks and solve these spiral reviews. At this point, um, you could even go back to the beginning spiral reviews and see if there's any that you know how to do now that we've reviewed more. Um, they are review of fourth grade and you should have 
seen it before, but if you haven't, then, you know, we've been practicing it for the past couple weeks now. So I hope that this video helps. Um, the only tricky part is to make sure that you're writing everything out and you're not accidentally skipping any numbers. But other than that, I'm pretty confident you guys could do this. If not, you know, give me a note on the messages or email me or just ask me during class. Alright, take care.